Welcome to Advanced Bait Solutions 2. We're back, and I'm Andy Neal. This time we're going to be travelling to Biodoc Fisheries in Somerset. Shard Reservoir. The mighty River Wye. The beautiful Hartleton Lakes. And lastly, we've come to the bagging mecca that is Cobhouse Fisheries. We've some familiar faces as well as a few new ones to show you the best tackle, tactics and baiting techniques to make sure you get the best out of your fishing. Let's go meet a man regarded by most as the best commercial fishery angler out there, Grant Albert. Well, I'm here at Campbell Lake at Viaduct Fishery, home with some tremendous catches. This man knows it better than most. He's come down and absolutely destroyed some big matches of late. If you want to come to a place and catch some big weights, this is the place to do it. You need big strong gear, big arms and deep nets. When you go about fishing here, you target a couple of different lines. First approach will be shallow fishing. Business end, I use an 861 turbotina with a lasso. I'm a big fan of lassos, only because when you keep casting and that, you don't come off. You use a band, sometimes it can keep coming off. Right. A carp and slap float, the reason I use that is because I can move it up and down the line whenever I want to. There's no shot on the line, right. so if the fish come closer to the surface, I can move my float down. So that's a self cocking float, is it? Self cocking float, mate, okay. obviously, with your bait on the end, depending if it's a pellet or meat, whatever you're using, yep. it'll cock it perfectly. I fish 020 mainline with an 018 or length. Right, okay. Just in case there's a difference. If you get a big fish and you get broke off, you, you know, that's what we use these for. Yeah. Plenty of hook lengths, quick change, back, in, back into Good. it again. And you're going to fish that one sort of 13, 14 metres? Yeah, I probably started about 14 today. You, right. know, you, you, you know, when you're fishing a match and you've got bank size presence and everything, it's always best to keep them a bit further out. Mm. Yes, they might go a bit further, but if, you, if they go too far, you pick the waggler up and chuck the waggler over it instead. I noticed you've got a waggler set up. I like floaty floats, I do. They seem to fly a little bit better. Yeah. And I also like weighted floats. Mm. Is that why you've got the, the float stops either side of the...? Yeah, because again, you can move them. Don't yeah. damage your line. Right, Whereas right, if right. you've got shot on your line, yeah. it can affect your line. Sure. So even if you do, you want to use shot, and that's the preference that you want to use, yeah. just slide a little bit of silicon on, and then squeeze your shot onto right, the silicon. Okay. So when you strike, you don't snap. Right. Whereas if you tighten the shot on too much, it could break. Oh. Um, same sort of thing, mate, 018 bottom, or 020, depending on what you're catching. Again, a lasso and an 861 again. These are the new G-Max rods. It's uh, an 11 foot six pellet waggler rod. You pick them up and you think, oh, that's a bit stiff. And I'll tell you something, mate, when you're fishing with them and you hit into a fish, you know, the action is fantastic, mate. They're absolutely oh, brilliant. brilliant. Do you fish any other lines? Yeah, there? I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll be, be prepared for, for later on in the match. Uh, right. So obviously what we'll do, we'll keep feeding hemp and, and, and meat short, like five sections, six sections. Right, okay. So it's a personal choice, really, depending on how, I like to keep them a little bit further out. Mm. So if you are bagging, you know, you can you can keep them there. Yep. Rather than if you catch them too close, you can spook and play in them all the time. My choice of float today is uh, a Carpa Force. Right. I also use uh, Garbolino DC 17s. They're right. cracking float as well. Mainline 020. Okay. Hook length 018. Same again. You're Same right. again. Okay. Different shot and pattern today. I've got a bulk and one dropper. Dead depth. Is Dead it? depth on the bottom. Yeah. Right. Uh, short and I'll be fishing meat. Uh, depending on the size of your. Um, I mean, I use a, this is a 175 mm -hmm. number four. Quite a long hook length on here today, but you can use shorter. And if I'd have had a shorter hook length on, it's personal choice again, I'd have had all my bulk together. Right. But as it's a bit longer hook length, I've got bulk and one dropper. Right, okay. And strong elastics as well to match? Not set too, uh, too tough. It's, it just comes out nice, obviously, on a puller bung. I mean, that's not too tight. No, now. that's, I mean, I just want to touch on that quickly. People get misconceived ideas that they've got to use super strong elastic, and it's not the way forward, is it? No. I mean, I've never been a big elastic person anyway, even when, you know, before these came about. Yeah. Um, I like to hook a fish. It's like when you're fishing shallow, you don't want to fish too heavy. Yeah. The reason is, because when you hook one, you want it to go down in your peg and pull it out your peg. Right. And then keep feeding over the top. Yeah. And keep them interested. Hmm. If you've got something that's really tight and you can't even pull it out your pole, they're going to go, as soon as you walk them, they're going to go mad in your peg. Yeah. And all the fish that are there then, you're going to spook mm. them away. Everyone knows me for fishing meat, and I'm confident at it, mm. you know, and I know I can catch big weights on it. Yeah. Looks like a fairly simple bait list to me. Booty today. Right. And probably pull only on the hook. OK. Obviously on our short line later on, we're going to put hemp in. Hemp and meat together are deadly, aren't they? Cracking. I, lo I mean, I love it. I'm a massive fan of it. Hemp's a great base for carp to come over and just hoover up with your nice piece of meat sitting there. It initially just drags loads of fish into the swim, yeah, does it? Yeah, it's the oils and, and the stuff off the hemp, especially in the smell. Um, and then you've got the soft texture of the meat, yeah. which they just seem to love. 
Boosty's got a lot of amino acids in it and, and, and betaine and things like that. It's really potent. I mean, it's cracking. It's a crack. Caught some big fish on that. Well, I've, I've got to be honest, Stephen, I've caught a few using that, so I, I, I know how effective it can be. Okay, well, I'm going to use a 7mm cutter today. Well, the good thing about a 7mm is, it depends on the size of the hook you're using, you can put two pieces on. I can feed it short and I can fire it long for my pellet waggler right. and I can feed it long for my pole as well. Right, okay. So it's so a perfect size. One size covers everything. I'll just quickly show you how simple and easy it is to cut this meat up in this meat cutter. When it is out in the sun, it does go a little bit softer, doesn't it? You it mentioned does, mate. Keep, keeping it in the fridge. If you're going to cut it up the night before you go, yeah. keep it in the fridge and then ideally keep it in a cool bag. Yeah, and then when it's on your bank, make sure you keep a towel over it. It keeps all the freshness and goodness into it. So many people, when I go around the fisheries, you see people we're sitting on the tray, it's burnt. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's not good. All the flavour's gone then. A few minutes to open the can, put it in there. Ready to go? Ready to go, mate. You come down here and catch £200 in a match. Yeah. Ridiculous weights. And yeah. you'll do that on what, three or four tins three of Three or four meat? tins. Depends, you might need a bit more sometimes. Depends on the venue, depends on the type of match you're fishing. Mm. But generally, if you're just going pleasure fishing, two to three tins, absolutely fantastic. You can have a crack of days fishing. I mean, look at that. As soon as you open it, look at the juices that are in there. You can smell it. You can you smell how strong yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's show you how to do this. Pretty simple. Push the plunge push down. Push it down. It goes through the one way. Just keep it on the side. Push it again. You know, the, all the juice that's in there, get it all involved. Yeah. But look at the difference in the colour. This one, for a hook bait, I don't think you can go far wrong. Hmm. You know, when, you, when you're fishing shallow, they're snatching at it anyway, so this one would be better for that. On the bottom, hook bait, hair rigging, whatever you're doing, baloney every time. Mm. That. It's got to be like a magnet to Absolutely, fish. Absolutely, mate. If that, you can't catch fish on that, there's something wrong. Right. So we're going to put some hemp in, feed a bit of this over the top. I wouldn't put that in with the hemp. I'll keep the hemp separate, and then what I should do is add a few. If you put too much meat in, it takes them longer to find your bait. Yeah, yeah. More hemp, less meat. More fish. You see lots of other hemp on the market. Mm. It's not as big as this. I'm looking at the size of that. I keep using a lot of it, mate. I mean, I use a lot. The oils and everything else that comes off it is in the can. Right. You know what I mean? That's why it makes it so great. We're fishing for car, yeah. and they're just greedy, you know yeah. what I mean? So they're going to come in, nice big bed of that on the bottom with your meat, get them confident, and then start slaying them. Someone said to me once, if I was a fish, I was going to be the biggest in the lake. Didn't quite know how to take that. No. One common problem a lot of people have is not knowing how much feed to put in at the start of the session, whether it be a match or a pleasure session. Obviously, Grant's a master at this. I'm not going to feed my short line with a pot. I'm going to just loose feed, and then later on in the match, then we'll start putting it in properly. I'm going to put that much hemp in, a good half a pot there, mate, yeah. of a big pot, and I want to put a few grains of meat in. Maybe just tip it off with a bit more. And we're going to put that long, right. and then I want to fish shallow over the top of it. So initially, we're going to get the fish there, we're going to feed over the top, and we're going to bring them up. When I'm fishing it long like this, I don't put it in like everybody else. People look at me as if I'm going a bit mad. I like to bounce the pole I do, make a nice big area. If you can see that. Right, right, right. right. Okay, so, so initially it's making a nice sound on the top, so they, them fish might want to come up straight away anyway. You see the oil slick on the water as well? Yeah, that flat That's patch. all off the hemp, that is. We're going to go straight over the top of that now with a the, with the shallow rig. We are. We've got a little band on there. I'm going to put a piece of meat. I'm going to push that through there. Yep. Stay at the other end. Pull it into the meat. Pull that into the meat. That's ready to go. So what's your starting depth, Grant? If you go too deep, you start foul looking them. So I always like to start off a little bit shallower and work my way down. Get to know the venue and you'll get to know how far yeah. and how deep they are. Do you know what I mean? You can see the one one pot full of bait. They're in and fizzing over yeah, it already. Look at that. Already, mate, yeah. Just just little and often. Just keep flicking your rig over like that as well. All the noise, the better. So obviously the noise of the bait going in and what have you is just drawing more fish into the area, is that yeah, right? Yeah, that's what it is, mate, yeah. Right. You just feed four or five bits of bait. There you go, straight away, look at that. That is literally straight away, mate. That's incredible. Right, so it? just come out your peg, a few more bits of meat, straight back in your swim, and then so start shipping back. So there's nothing hurried about that, was it? That, that no, fish no. grabbed the bait, off it went. Yeah. Just draw the fish out of the swim. Yeah, that's important. Feed a bit more, take your time. Yeah, take him, you want him out your swim. So any more fish that are in there, you, wanna, you don't want to disturb them, you see. Hmm. Right, get him halfway back, catapult. No rush, mate. So that's why these light elastics are so good yeah. now, isn't it? Feed a bit more. Just keep some interest in what, you know, while you're playing these fish. You see people you know, trying to horse these fish in and really pull them too hard, don't you? There's, yeah. there's just no need. Every fish counts, mate. You know, one fish cost me 
you know, a considerable amount of money. So just take your time. There you go. Easy as that, eh? Easy as that, mate. <laughs> Simple as that. Not getting any easier than that, mate. <laughs> Put your bait on before you go back out again, feed. You've got to keep that feed going in, mate. You're seriously quick. Just get yourself ready. A few more bits of meat. Back out. So they're ready now. They're looking for bait now, them fish. Later on in the match, you're going to be fishing shorter. So what we do, four, between four and ten pieces, mate, it's no, and just throw them in. You know where you're fishing, make sure you're, you're chucking it on the same line. Yeah. And just do that every five or ten minutes, just keep them occupied. And just all you're doing is priming it for later on, basically, aren't you? The loose offerings that you're throwing in are going to get eaten pretty quick. Yeah. So you want a nice bed there, so come like two and a half hours to go with the match, I'll start putting hemp in them, so you can keep them there rather than swimming around, trying to look for your bait and then go in. There's a nice bed of bait there for them. They'll stay there then. Fish have started to back away from that shallow pole line now. He's caught quite a few. So, time for the waggler, I think, mate. Let's just have a look. Those odd bits that have been going past the pole line, been priming that line for a while now, isn't it? Yeah. If you don't get a bite straight away, you've got to work. This is the thing with this waggler, you've got to work it. You've got to find the depth that they're at. You've got to keep casting. No good just leaving it there. You've got to make it work. Generally, when they're there, Andy, he hits the water and he's off the rest. Yeah. Just like that. As easy as that? As easy as that, yeah. You know, when we're playing a fish, you've got to try and feed at the same time, exactly the same as we would do it on a pole. Hold it on my leg, put just a few cubes in, because obviously it's a bit more difficult now. Still feed. Got to keep them interested out there. So as predicted, mate, two casts and you've hooked another fish? Yeah. And there we go, in the net. And that, that was on a cube of the Poloni, was it? Poloni, mate, mate, yeah. I've been firing the boosty ones out and fishing the Poloni ones on the, on the up, mate. I've been feeding that short line all day now and I'm itching to get on it. You're going to kick this off with a, a big pot of hemp and a few cubes of Poloni just to make sure they're down on the deck where you want them? Yeah, because I've been noticed a few of them are swirling, you see, so Tough you can loose feed and they will come up in the water, so we'll put some hemp down, get them down. I'm just going to cup it in. I'm not going to make any noise, so I want them to get them on the deck, so I'm just going to lower that in. And hopefully that gets straight to the bottom and the fish will follow it down. Fantastic. Lovely summer's weather's come back to join us, mate. It's been on and off all day, hasn't it? Yeah, terrible. So I'm going to put two pieces of polony on, two sevens. There's a little bit of fizzing going on there. My word. So I think there might be one or two there. <laughs> they absolutely home in on that polony, don't they? Yeah. It's just so pungent. Look at that. I'm I've, I've just, I've just, just literally lowering that in. Something's rather than off, let it go out and try, and you might foul up one. Yeah. And as it's gone in, it's just grabbed all of it. This is where you do your damage in the last two hours of the match. They tend to be bigger fish as well, you see. I don't know why, but then big fish, in most venues you go to. But I mean, I know from experience on this lake, and I've caught them up to 15 pounds, late on, over a bed of emp. It's devastating, mate. And all of that on a few tins of poloni, boosted meat, and a tin of emp. Yeah. Incredible fishing. Yeah. You, you're that practised at it now that you, you can get these fish in relatively quick. Yeah. If you're fishing a match, you've got to get them in a little bit quicker. Generally, you, you know, you don't need to bully them, because more often than not, you'll pull out of them. Yeah, and another one. I can't believe that actually took as you were lowering your rigging. I know, yeah. And it's, it's in the mouth as well. It's not foul up to either, yeah. so. That's right down its throat, that. Oosh. <laughs> and put him back. Even a brummie can catch a few here. Yeah, even a brummie can catch a few here, mate. What a day's fishing, unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. A few tins of meat, a couple of tins of super seed hemp, and you've just caught fish on everything you've done. It was just fantastic, mate. <laughs>